Hi, my name is Amy and I am Movement with Amy. I'm live on location here in beautiful New Brunswick, Canada. This uh, video is entitled Twists, a lecture from the lookout. This beautiful lookout around me is a, a place that I go often. Snowshoe to get here, happy to be here to talk about twists. So this video is intended for my current teachers in training who are about three quarters of the way through a vinyasa style yoga teacher training. So I may assume a, a few things just knowing what they know, uh, but this is great for, for you if you already know your anatomy. This is even better for you if you don't know anything that makes you sort of the best student. So here we go, twists. The purpose of a twist is basically to get at the in-betweens, the muscle tissue that uh, is not covered in the, in the case of a simple side bend, forward fold, or a back bend. So just knowing that we aren't stick people and a lot of our muscles really diagonal and bend over bones to approach their attachment sites just makes it so that we require twists to actually get relief and, and strength everywhere. Together, let's understand why a, a twist can be very effective for getting those in-betweens, something I call cleaning behind the fridge. So uh, for much of this video, you'll be seated. So find yourself seated with me. I will not mirror you, so do precisely what I say for lefts and rights. Outstretch your right hand beside you and simply tent those fingertips on the floor or on the mat beside your body. Take your left arm high and up. And from here, just feel length. So notice the, the benefits that you might achieve just by having this left arm lifted. A little bit of space maybe in that left rib cage. If you pull your thumb back, maybe you feel some space in the left chest. So this is, this is just traction. This is just a little bit of arm flexion. Now in terms of your spine, this is your side flexion. So go ahead and side flex with me. Real good. For me, I get a nice pull along my backside of my left arm, the affected arm that I'm working. So the whole idea of the cleaning behind the fridge or the benefit of a twist would be the feeling that you get when you maintain the side bend, but then twirl your chest up towards the sky. So you're just accessing places that might even have, make it harder for you to breathe. Those in-between hard to reach places, do the same opposite direction if you roll your chest down towards the mat. You'll get little fibers of your back that weren't previously available from the straight up side bend. So return to just the side bend and then pop back up. So that's what we're looking at with twists, the real in-betweens, largely the spaces between the ribs, um, but all kinds of things can be affected by doing a good twist. Let's review a little bit about your spine. To do that, uh, just lift your, your right hand, spread your fingers, and just palm print the, the back of your head. Now use the palm of your hand or some fingertips to sort of rub around until you feel the bump that is at the base of your skull. Figure out where that is. It's called the Inion, so I'll, I will now point to mine and kind of feel mine on my own body. This is your your inion, so it's a structure on your occiput, your occipital bones in the back of your head. So if you drop your fingertips just below that, and I'd like you to do that with me, you'll be probably feeling a little bump, which is about cervical vertebrae two, which we call C2. So you know that your spine bones, your vertebral column has these processes that stick out behind you, your spinous processes. So when you see someone with bare skin doing a, a cat pose, all of the bumps that stick out are their spinous processes, which are just markings on their vertebral column. So keeping that in mind, spinous process being that dinosaur bump that is exposed bone on the back wall of the body, keeping that in mind, Let's review a few of the structures of the spine. So the inion is skull. If you drop below it, uh, you won't 
really be able to feel cervical or C1, but it's there. Um, you'd have to dig in pretty deep and you wouldn't actually want to do that. But below the inion is the uh, proverbial C1. What you're likely feeling is cervical 2, C2. So you'll bump down a little bit from there. And then when you get to a really giant, impossible to miss bone that, uh, that's very spiky, just do what I'm doing. Do a little bit of cat flexion with your head and you'll kind of feel a real prominence moving around under your fingers, almost like a, a bead or a pearl piece of a necklace. So that is, that is uh, C7, cervical vertebrae 7. So we're just counting them down here. So review, I do like to broken record, back it up, go back up to your inion, your bump of knowledge. If you rub down from there, you'll, you are at the C1 level, but you probably won't feel it. Your very, very thick nuchal ligament is covering it. So that's probably what you're feeling. Actually, if you rotate your neck side to side, if you feel a taut band, that is your nuchal ligament. So that's just an extra tidbit for today. All right, moving down, and then possibly adding that C flexion of your spine, you'll notice that your fingertips hit this, the cervical vertebrae seven. Okay, you can drop your hand for a second and pop your head back up. So that is your C spine. You only have seven cervical vertebrae, so you just felt one to seven. So your cervical spine, your neck, AKA your neck, is really good at twisting, I hope. Um, I, but it has a lot of freedom because uh, we're moving on to the thoracic spine, the middle spine, which uh, doesn't have as much freedom because of the shoulder blades, the arm bones, and the biggest thing being the ribs. So in a roundabout way, I'm kind of making my point as we go through the whole spine. The neck, if you do a couple of careful shoulder checks, da da da. The neck is, is very capable of twisting um, because, because of the, the shape of the bones, uh, C1 to 7, cervical 1 to 7, and because there's nothing surrounding, there's, there's nothing outside but air. When it comes to the rest of you, your spine bones are a little bit more embedded, so they're blocked by your rib cage, which is a good thing. The rib cage is a natural blocker so that you don't go too far. And then when it comes to your low spine, which we'll get to, that doesn't have any bony blockers. It doesn't have a rib cage, which is part of why it gets injured often. Um, but it does have sort of this guiding force being the, the pelvis. Um, so yeah, we will make our way down to the thoracic and the, the lumbar spine. Okay, to move on, we will layer a little bit. This will take a bit of mobility from your shoulders. Try it out your right hand, <laughs> place it on your C7, because you remember where that is. Your left hand, the other free hand, place it on your, your sternum. So just tap a little bit. Um, that's an easy, I hope, bone to find, uh, the layman term being your breastbone. So uh, seeing me from my profile and feeling your, yourself with one hand forward and one hand back, the, uh, the sternum, sort of marks uh, thoracic one, your T-spine. So you have seven cervical, cervical vertebrae, you have 12 thoracic. So just below that very prominent uh, C7, you'll find T1, thoracic vertebrae one. So thoracic vertebrae, vertebrae one, just under that C7, and it's very much marked by uh, your, your sternum in terms of uh, marking it on the front of your body. Um, not to go too crazy or too deep, but it's hard to isolate things at times, but every single thoracic vertebrae, there are 12 of them, every single one of them has a correlating rib. So you know where your collarbones are. Those are easy to find. If you were to, and I wouldn't want you to do this with any great um, depth or, or great effort, but if you were to go kind of in and under your collarbones, and even if you take a little breath, you're sort of finding that uh, first rib. So that's where your rib cage starts. Your collarbones, I like to think of them as um, kind of turbo ribs. They're very, 
Um, very heavy, very thick, very protective. They're trying to help you out. Okay, so sternum, think of that as basically where your thorax starts, your thoracic spine starts. That's, I guess, what I'm trying to say in the longest way ever. <laughs> so find your sternum, find your belly button. Ba -ba -da -da. Okay, this is the level or the distance, the, the length, the, the fullness, the absolute thoracic piece of your body. So the top hand notifying you of the sternum is about thoracic or T vertebrae one. The belly button is about T or thoracic vertebrae 12. So if you were to now go from your belly button and just draw a, a very horizontal waistline for yourself, you're gonna hit your side rib cage pretty quickly. So you're kind of hitting like rib 10 actually, because the ribs um, will go down in a V shape. So you're hitting about rib 10, but if you were to follow back behind you, your belly button is about in line with um, rib 12. Rib 11 and 12 both float. So as I said, it's hard to isolate the lesson because once you talk about the vertebrae, you have to talk about the ribs. So you have seven cervical, vertebrae in your neck. The spiky part here being C7. The underneath your skull is immediately C1. C1 to 7. They, they spin, they rotate quite a bit. Uh, following that, considering your sternum the top of the thoracic spine, you have 12, uh, verte 12 vertebrae for your thorax. 12 thoracic vertebrae. Um, so Going back to the whole belly button area, from belly button to uh, to butt crack, belly B to B, belly button to butt crack, this level of the body, da, 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 that's all your lumbar spine, and you have five of those. So you have five lumbar, five lumbar, five L spine. You have twelve thoracic, twelve T spine. You have seven cervical. Okay, so. When we do twists, the place that we want to, uh, if I had to simplify it, the place that we want to affect the most is the thoracic spine. Because of the, the uh, geometry of the bones and because the, the ribs sort of need assistance, it's, it is the place that we want the twist to come from. Your low back, your lumbar spine, so the belly button to butt crack spine, Da, 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 or belly button to pubic bone, those five vertebrae, we want them to twist as well. We want them to help out, but they are playing a minor role. So your thoracic spine is Batman, your lumbar spine is Robin when it comes to twisting, if that helps you out. So um, the, the most common back injury is the old lift and twist. Uh, a lot of people don't know where L1 to 5 are. Now you know that it's belly button to butt crack, but the most most common herniation, which herniation means basically um, an uneven or a sort of moved out, somewhat out of place or kind of gobby, uneven quality to a, a disc, and a disc is between each of those vertebrae. Um, the most common place to do that is between uh, L4 and L5. So often what happens is um, you're helping your friend move, something heavy is on the ground, you have your legs too straight and you know that as soon as your knees are locked out your hamstrings are no longer helping you. So with your legs too straight if you grab something and if you do not have very much thoracic rotation your low back does a twist and lift and it's not prepared to do that and that's where the injury happens. So you want a really mobile thoracic spine so that your lumbar spine can twist less because your lumbar spine will simply twist for you if you don't teach your thoracic spine to twist. And if you lift something with straight legs, again the hamstrings should be helping out a whole lot more um, so that's part of the issue as well. All right, now for our first twist. 
In your yoga practice, many of your twists are going to be active assisted, so often they'll have the, the hands involved. Um, I would encourage you to do more active and sort of hold pull people back from doing the active assisted. So I'd make them work for it first. The, the whole active assisted using the hands, using that leverage, let that come at the end of class. Make them do some active work first so they can really get a true twist without um, without leverage, without helping themselves. So uh, let's bring the hands out in front of us, sort of genie style, make a fist, and then a flat open palm. You're sitting down with me. And let's be kind of lazy in the hips. Let's be tractioned, so let's be long in the lower back, the lumbar spine, the belly button to butt crack region of your body. Be long and tractioned in the L spine and then knowing where your thorax your thoracic spine is sternum to belly button <clears throat> uh, twist from there let's twist to our right let's come back to center let's twist to our left so you're long in the lumbar spine, the L spine, the, be or the belly button to butt crack spine. And most of your motion is coming from your thoracic spine, your T-spine. All right, let's do a couple things to make that a little bit better. Keeping the arms out in front of you, lift your left knee. Squeeze while this left knee is lifted. Squeeze and just contract, sort of bunch up. Perch would be a good word, your left butt cheek. So your left knee is lifted. Your left butt cheek is squeezing. So it's kind of narrow and pointy feeling. Keep power in that left butt cheek and kind of use the left butt to pull the knee down. Do that one more time on the same side. Still feeling strong. Let the left knee lift up. And then very much with the intention of adding weight, feeling heavy, use that left butt to pull the left knee down. Keep the left hip as parked, as weighted, as immovable as possible. Now lengthen the lumbar spine, the L spine, and then twist to the right. As you stay here in this twist, lift the left knee and then superpower secure the left knee down your butt really really heavy what we are looking for is a, a place that we know intimately in this teacher training is our glute meat of the left side especially so with your heavy heavy left sit bone enable your thoracic spine your belly button to sternum spine to twist farther away so this concept is uh, what I call tucking in the, the bed sheet or the fitted sheet. Think about the corner of your mattress. That is your left butt and you're pulling your, your tissues, your left uh, glute med, tightly, tightly over your left sit bone, like you would if you're making your bed. And only because that left butt is so heavy is the twist to your right so profound? So twist a little bit farther, if you're still with me. And then come back to center. Yay! All right, same thing, second side. And because our arms are not helping us yet, this is still a super turbo active twist. So let's lift the right knee. As the knee stays suspended and lifted, and the snowmobiles rip out here in New Brunswick. As that right knee stays lifted, squeeze, or I like, I love the word perch, stolen from Pilates, kind of feel kind of perky and pointy in the right butt cheek. Have the idea of your right knee and your right butt growing heavier as you lay the knee back down. Oh yeah, and then do that one more time. The knee rises, there's tension in your right butt there's maintenance of that tension as you lower the knee down. Heavy, heavy, heavy right sit bone, which is you finding your glute med, which is a stabilizing muscle of your 
gut if you're unfamiliar. Lengthen your lumbar spine, your L spine, your butt crack to belly button spine, and then twist to your left. In the twist, so you are still twisted to your to your left to further reiterate that whole fitted bed sheet being tucked in. Untuck the right knee, so lift the right knee. You're still in your twist as you power the right knee down. Heavy, heavy right butt. See if you can twist a little farther in your thorax, your thoracic spine. Oh yeah, and then come back to center. So the big lesson there is the, the awesomeness of your twist comes from the weight of your hips. So if your hips are weighted and confident and heavy, then that lumbar spine can lift and then it can give way or give the job, hand the job over to the thoracic spine, the middle spine to twist. And then in most classes, your teacher would then cue your neck. Just thinking of your neck as this really lovely uh, continuation of your your middle spine um, all right adding on from there so a heavy butt a very stationed strong pelvis very steady means a longer low back because it's pulling down as the low spine goes up means a more healthy more successful twist um, your scapulas your shoulder blades are on your rib cage your rib cage is essentially an extension of your thoracic spine your thoracic spine is what you are trying to twist so in wrapped up in that whole package is your uh, rotator cuff so your rotator cuff is a series of muscles that cover your shoulder blades uh, you found your your hip strength the way that your hips drag down so that your low spine, your lumbar spine can rise up and then you can get this fabulous twist over, out of your thoracic, your middle spine. Um, muscles that you want to really engage to even further your twist, on top of having the weight in your hips and the strength in your butt, you want a, a powerful rotator cuff. So your rotator cuff is sort of this covering, this detailed um, sleeve over top of your shoulder blade. Your shoulder blade is over top of your thoracic cage, your rib cage, um, and you remember that you are trying to affect your thoracic, ca your thoracic cage in a twist, and that is part of the thoracic spine. For every thoracic vertebrae, there is a, a rib. So, um, muscling up the shoulder blade will kind of bend and allow play with the rib cage because the shoulder blade is over top of the ribs. So, simple rotator cuff strength. Wedge your right elbow into your side and use your shoulder blade to turn your arm bone, your shoulder, or your fingertips, sorry, out, outward. So you have this proud open chest. So we're kind of putting things together. You'll realize why you get certain cues in class with your twists. You'll get the open your collarbones stuff and part of that is to find the the strength in the back body to assist the twist so that's what's going on here uh, just relax and then find that on the left side so your left elbow into your ribs your left fingers forward let your shoulder blade squeeze your rotator cuff let that be the the strength that pulls your arm bone out so that your chest is open and your blade is strong okay I'll try to blend this together, relax this left arm. Let's uh, go back to where we were with the fists and the palm print. <clears throat> All right, let's lift the left knee. Let's muscle the left knee down. Feel so, so strong in the left butt cheek in particular. Lengthen your lumbar spine in total. Twist to your right. Now staying in the twist, contract or squeeze your right shoulder blade. So instead of telling yourself to open your chest, just squeeze your back. Squeeze your right shoulder blade tighter towards midline, tighter towards the spine. Push your left butt cheek really strong into the floor. See if you can twist. Maintain all of that and just let the neck go a little bit farther with strength. and then back to center. 
So I'm hoping that you felt a, a difference or an improvement thinking of the opposing butt cheek and the same side shoulder blade. So you get this gorgeous diagonal into the twist. On the other side, let your right knee lift. And the whole lift thing that we're doing is simply to exaggerate and isolate. Find weight in your right knee and butt as it lowers. Find height and length in your lumbar spine as it lifts. Twist to your left. And then in the experience of the left-sided twist, squeeze the same side, the left shoulder blade. To be really complicated, and I think you're ready for it, stay here and just keep thinking and feeling. Your left shoulder blade is squeezing and getting smaller, more contracted, more shrunk. Your left chest is getting more open. The space across your right shoulder blade is actually getting longer. And that is still comes from a really confident, heavy right butt cheek. Come back to center. Then last time, let's put it all together. Heavy left butt. See if you can feel your right shoulder blade starting or initiating the twist. Twist to your right, use that right shoulder blade. So this is your most active twist. Let your head and neck turn. And now this is active assisted. Let your hands come down and twist. Slowly back to center. And then finally on the other side, fist in the palm print, lift her up. Find that the right butt is supportive and heavy. And then think of rotator cuff, feel your left, left rotator cuff, your left shoulder blade help you twist to the left. Still in an active, active twist, move your neck farther. Then active assisted, add the arms, they come down and help you twist. Back to center. That is an awesome twist. I'll just show you two more. One from tabletop, which is called Thread the Needle. Uh, one from a low lunge, which almost looks the same. And then uh, a little, little information about lower back twists. So stay with me. Hands and knees. With the strong hip and strong shoulder, shoulder blade, excuse me, information in mind, let's find ourselves pulling the, the left hip a little bit back. So you remember the feeling of perching or weighting the, the hip on the ground. Now you just have to do that against the air. Take your right arm out to the side. So this is a very, very super active twist. Keep squeezing your left butt without opening the chest yet. Squeeze your right rotator cuff. So squeeze the shoulder blade deeper onto your back. From a heavy guarded left hip that's, that's uh, not willing to move, it's immovable, do start to twist your middle back. Oh yeah. That's a great twist. So you keep doing what you're doing, but your, your right arm has become an accessory to the twist. You are twisting away from your left hip still, even in this occasion, even with the, the hips exposed to the air. Of course, it feels different because your butt's not glued to the ground, but you just find a, a heavy left knee, left foot, strong left butt. Squeeze the right shoulder blade more than anything. And then I might call it a passive twist as you actually thread the needle. So you might find a heavier right butt, a stronger, thicker right butt, as the right arm now goes under you. Both shoulder blades spread open as your right ear drops. Back to tabletop. So that's your quick experience of thread the needle. Um, it's very much two-phase. It's active and open at the top, and then you might go more passive at the bottom. So you make the choice where to put that into class. 
So let's really, uh, even if you lift and land, kind of push the right top of foot onto the ground. Feel, notice the whole right, everything, your right butt, even your right quad. Harder to see from your perspective, but float your left arm out. Before you twist, have a play between the right hip pulling back and the left shoulder blade squeezing. So you're tightening certain pulleys of the body. Both legs very heavy and stationed. Start to twist your middle back. And you can move your eyes, your head. Then maybe you feel more thick, more supported in the left hip as you thread the needle. Going passively into the twist, dropping the head, noticing length in both rotator cuffs so you have space across that whole middle back. And then back to tabletop. Come into, I'll just sort of save some time here, from uh, knees tightly together, from heavy feet and a strong butt, just come into a tall kneeling position. Step your right foot forward into a controlled low lunge. Drop your right butt, but really both butts down the butt of the bent leg. They're both bent, I suppose, but the butt of the front leg and the back leg. Let's bring the arms to a T. Yes. Pull your right butt back. Things get a little bit different with the, the leg split. Pull your right butt back. So big security on this leg. This is the leg that we want to be less messy with for an appropriate twist. Try to use your right shoulder blade to twist to the right. So this is a super active twist. And then what you more commonly see in class is an active assisted twist. Stay upright, bring the hands into prayer. That's quite challenging. So consider teaching that as part of your sequence. Squeeze your right rotator cuff, your right shoulder blade. Lengthen your lumbar spine, your low spine, as you then place your left elbow on the outside of the knee. And then from two heavy hips, you'll just be able to twist and twist and twist. And then pop back up to center. High kneeling position, so a bit of balance to put the knees side by side. Arms to a T, just to be consistent. Palms facing front. Left foot on the ground. Both hips kind of drop so that the front of the, the belly rises, that low spine. That belly button to butt crack. Make it long, attractioned lumbar spine. Squeeze your left rotator cuff, and maybe that pulls you into the twist to the left. Go ahead and move your neck. Still active, hands to heart. And then active assisted, hook your right elbow to the outside of your knee. Then you kind of redo the twist once you have the stuck quality, the immovable quality of the right elbow. left butt, left shoulder blade, both strong in the case of the, the split-legged twist. Strong to center. And then back to your high kneeling position. All right, so that's two, your tabletop, your low runner's lunge. I'll give you, a, give you another standing one and then we'll call it. So I'll just pop up here on my mountain. At home, oh, I don't have any. I don't have anything good with me here. At home, just grab something that you're okay with dropping. I'm going to use my little puff vest. One more twist. I have my boots on and I've kind of backed out of my my frame. Uh, and I've just grabbed a simple prop close by. This is just my puff vest. So uh, grab something at home. It could be really anything: a, a book, a shirt, a sock. 
Um, and just, we'll use this little prop to secure our legs for a standing twist. So I'll step away from you, side on, Whew, side on, don't fall off the mountain. Ma just mountain pose your legs, sorry. And then place your prop between your knees. So that prop is just to keep you from swinging the hips. You just want some inner thigh strength here. Reach up, your two arms up. Soften your knees, so kind of chair pose-ish and really squeeze your prop, whether it's a, a book, a shirt, a sock. Much like the previous twists I've taught you, but really think about the seated twist now. Squeeze your left butt, lift the lumbar spine. Let's keep the arms up just for a change. Twist to the right. Now use your lats, use your armpit muscles to pull the arms to a T. So this would be more of a traditional standing twist. To turbo exaggerate the heavy hips, think of your upper body twisting to the right, but your knees almost pointing or pushing a little bit to the left. So act like that left thigh is pressed into a wall. Squeeze the right shoulder blade more. Again, you're twisting to the right. Right strong shoulder blade. Left heavy, heavy hip and the whole thigh is heavy at this point because you're standing. Back up to middle. Both arms overhead. Squeeze your prop to keep the legs fixed, to keep them immovable. Mentally locate your right butt cheek and really squeeze it hard and heavy as you lift your lumbar spine. With your arms still high and overhead, twist to your left. Find a lat pull down to take the arms to a T. Squeeze your left rotator cuff to twist farther. The whole outer surface of your right thigh heavy and in opposition. And then back up. All right, so, and as a finale to review, your C-spine, your cervical is what C stands for, um, has seven vertebrae, so the whole throat area just from beneath that Indian or that bump of knowledge to the really bumpy, really spiky C7. That's the length of your C-spine, your cervical spine. It moves fairly well, so it's pretty mobile. Again, it has nothing blocking it. It has no uh, rib cage to sort of say yes or no to it. Your thoracic spine is what you want to teach how to twist so that you have a, a mobile thoracic spine and you avoid hyper over mobilizing your lumbar spine although it is the robin to the batman your thoracic spine <laughs> goes from your sternum so t1 is about approximately at sternum level to belly button is approximately t12 t stands for thoracic uh, your thoracic spine has uh, attached to it 12 ribs. Um, yep. So you're getting some good stuff for your rib cage when you, anytime that you do your twists, your lumbar spine is belly button to pubic bone or belly button to butt crack. It's that belly length of the body. It's a little bit vulnerable because it doesn't have that, that suction of the um, rib cage. It has, it has no corset, um, but you can override that or hack the vulnerability of your, your lumbar spine your low spine through uh, having really, really heavy hips, um, which is what we did a lot in our twists. So in a seated twist, in sort of a fixed position, even standing that final twist that we did, when you twist to your right, you are moving away from a grounded left hip. So twisting to the right is thanks to, or the subtlety and detail of it is the strength of the left leg and the right shoulder blade. So you're opening that um, diagonal line. When you twist to the left, it comes from the integrity 
of the right leg, the right butt cheek, if you're standing, the weight of the right foot, and the strength of the left rotator cuff to twirl you to the, the left. So those are the, the big take homes. Cervical spine, thoracic spine, they, uh, we want them to move really well so that your low spine mainly does traction. Your thoracic spine, your middle spine, your rib cage spine is Batman. Your low spine, your belly button to butt crack spine is Robin. So they work together and they're so great and I, I hope that you feel stronger and smarter about your twists. And in terms of sequencing, it's always good to make people do the active twist first. Um, just active is always better. You, you always learn more, your body, your body uh, absorbs more if you're, if you're less helped by other measures, if you are actually doing it with your strength. Um, but you can see why it feels good to finish class with sort of the, the weighted arms and the twist. I hope that that helps and we'll be in touch soon. Thank you for joining me for this twists lecture in beautiful New Brunswick, Canada.